time now. It's time. Time now. Here we go. For Blues America. It's Blues America time. Blues America time. The blues is a feeling. The blues is life. The blues is stories and legend. The blues is the heart and soul of America. It is our history and national standard. Everything started from the blues. It's time now for Blues America. America. Broadcasting coast to coast. Let's talk about the blues, shall we? Hey now, let's talk about some blues. This is your source for blues talk. A little blues show from Arizona, Blues America. I'm in charge of this mess. Your humble host, your blues anchor. The guy behind the blues, Drew Verbis. Here's what you need to know. Blues America broadcasts weekly on the radio, from coast to coast, and worldwide on the streaming podcast at PRX, iTunes, and online now at bluesamerica.com. The website also features blues junk, like the photo of the week, the blues news, and detailed program information. Contact the show at bluesamerica at gmail.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Today on Blues America, famed bluesman Tommy Castro, plus the blues break big number one, and the way, way back blues with Ishmael Bracy from PRX, Public Radio Exchange. You're listening to Blues America. I'm that guy, Drew Verbis. America is recorded and produced at the Chico Chisholm Memorial Studio. Today on Blues America, the 2010 BB King Entertainer of the Year and Alligator Recording Artist Tommy Castro. He's one of the most recognizable names in the blues world. He started his professional career with Warner Brothers recording artist, the Dynatones, before going solo with his own band in 1991. Since then, he's released 14 albums, most of which for Alligator and Blind Pig Records. He's built a remarkable legacy, which includes winning six Blues Music Awards, touring with B.B. King, recording John Lee Hooker's Last Session, appearing on a popular Bo Diddley tribute album, and working as the house band, for three seasons of NBC's Comedy Showcase. Please welcome Tommy Castro to Blues America. Blues America is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. Blues America. America. Now that's some home cooking. Tommy, welcome to Blues America. I love the new album. It seems like it's more uh, stripped down than the previous one, and I think it really captures that live feeling. Yeah, it seems to be going pretty well, man. I'm real happy about it. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's just about me and the, and the guys playing uh, in a setup where everything sounds pretty live. Um, we didn't do a lot of overdubbing. We didn't do a lot of... Uh, um, fixing of, of things, we let things be as as uh, you know, let certain imperfections just be. You know, uh, it's the kind of things, that, kind of things that come with a live performance. We let a lot of things just be in the way they work. Uh, and so, um, using one for the most part, I used one guitar and one amp on all the songs. Uh, no effects, um, real uh, straight ahead. Um, um, straight ahead mixing uh, of the record you know we weren't trying to go for all different kinds of different sounds we had kind of a basic sound the last record was 
kind of a big project. It was, uh, I, I don't know, had five or six special guests on there from, you know, Tab and Wah and Joe Bonamassa, people like that, Marshall Ball. And I had, uh, I had a concept for that album. It was pretty involved, you know, I was uh, going for a certain kind of sound on some of the songs, not all the songs, but I was, I was going for a certain kind, making a certain kind of record. And, and I let it be a big project, because that's what I was, that's what it was uh, about. Um, and it was, uh, you know, we made a good record, and, uh, you know, people uh, responded well to that. And, uh, you know, and then I had to start thinking, like, what am I going to do next? Well, the next album, I wanted to keep it real straight ahead, real simple. Because, I mean, that one, on, on, like, say, The Devil, you know, for instance, I used, uh, I used several different guitars and amps and effects, and uh, there was a lot going on in the uh, in the mixing of the record. It was kind of some modern uh, techniques that are used, uh, you know, to get certain kinds of things happening with the low end, and I was, you know, depending on the track, I was doing whatever called for to make it as good as it could be and as, uh, as you know kind of a, um, a big sounding record you know so so what I wanted to do was the next album be like the opposite of that where it was just me and my guys just playing down uh, the next next batch, batch of songs that I had written you know specifically for this project so they were kind of designed to be played the way they are you know some more straight ahead blues and uh, simple R&B stuff so the reaction I'm getting from people on it is that it does really uh you know, let the, the, the true and real sound of, uh, you know, Tommy Castro and the painkillers, you know, comes across. And and that, and that and that was the idea. That was the whole idea of this record, just to be, just so, so like I said, the opposite of the last one. And the, and the one before that was quite a bit different than that, you know, and that's, that's kind of my, that is the method to my madness, is to try to make a different kind of record of, pretty different kind of record each time and still uh, you know remain um, true to my you know, who, I, who I am and what I'm all about musically and, and I, I think I've managed to, to do that Listening to Blues America. Blues America. Blues America. You're listening to Blues America with special guest Tommy Castro. Now, Tommy, we just listened to part of Common Ground, a great song from your new album, which has been featured on Blues America. Talk to me about the opening track. Uh. Well, uh, you know, for the most part, this record was also uh, fairly lighthearted, uh, traditional blues subjects, you know, songs about the relationships and whatnot, um, and, uh, you know, pretty fun record all the way around, just tribute to B.B. King, you know, straight ahead blues shuffle, um, we did a couple of things, um, that, uh, you know, are, are sort of like traditional blues R&B subjects. And I wanted to keep it pretty lighthearted for the most part, but but I just can't uh, keep myself from um, social commentary. If I'm writing songs, I'm going to make uh, you know it'll usually have something, some kind of a comment on the, the way things are uh, as as far as I can see it. <laughs> Uh, 
that song, uh, Common Brown, is because it just really breaks my heart to see how, you know, we've become so divided as a nation and, and people are, uh, you know, have been manipulated into fighting each other and uh, being so angry and hateful towards one another. And, um, you know, it's so obviously uh, been orchestrated by, you know, certain powers and that be. <laughs> and, uh, it's no laughing matter. I always laugh at things that are really difficult and uncomfortable. I just always have that laughter kind of pops out. I don't know what that's all about. It's some more therapy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you do some great slow blues on Died and Gone to Heaven. Now, what was your inspiration behind this song? Oh, well, I, I have a, I'm in a beautiful relationship with the woman I love. And I, I just felt like... Uh, it was, uh, as far as you know, musically, uh, as far as the record goes, I felt uh, it, it was time for a ballad because the last album didn't have a ballad on it. And then, I, and, uh, you know, soul uh, music is, is part of, is a big part of what I do. And I just felt like it was time for a new kind of uh, R&B style ballad. And, and I just, you know, I started writing about... Uh, you know how I feel <laughs> about this this woman of mine, and um, and then it came out uh, came out pretty good. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I, I wrote it with another songwriter friend of mine, and uh, it started kept on wanting to go into some in a little bit more of a um you know just collaborating with other writers. It's a uh, it's interesting because you get a lot out of that. Uh, but at the same time, you have to push back in order to retain, uh, you know, your your sound. And so I had to keep on, you know, uh, you know, working back and forth until until it came out the way it was. But it, it came out pretty much how I how I wanted it. And gone to heaven. I feel like I'm ten feet off the ground. America. 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 Now that's America. some home cooking. <laughs> Tommy Castro, we're talking about your new album on Alligator Records, Method to My Madness. Um, and we have uh, Bad Luck playing in the background, a great B.B. King cover. Tell me how you put your own stamp on a classic. Jesus, you know, try not to play. Try not to, you know, play and sing just like the person that you're covering, you know. Um, I have been, I've been heavily influenced by B.B. King, you know, in, in my life and, uh, yeah, we went on tour with him in the in the uh, late '90s. Did, did a couple of summer tours with uh, him and Buddy Guy, and and it was uh, it was a real you know great time for me. And uh, before that, when I was young and I was just a kid learning how to play, I mean, I, I a couple of the first real blues albums I had were BB King records. And, and I learned a lot from that, you know, just listening to those records and trying trying to learn how to play guitar. Uh, I, you know, I did it in those days by by listening to records and hanging out with my friends. There was no formal training. Uh, you could probably tell that by listening to my play. It's it's kind of the way the way old blues guys learned, you know, passing it on from one guy to the next. And uh, you know, uh, me and the kids in my neighborhood, nobody was, uh, you know, it wasn't a very affluent neighborhood. People weren't taking music lessons for the most part. We just uh, listened to records and figured things out, you know. And and uh, and the most amazing thing was uh, to sit next to him on stage and, and jam. 